I'm, a, I'm naive. Um, I'm naive in the sense that with, a, with very, very few exceptions, the defense acquisition system operates with great integrity. Um, I've seen two examples of it, at least from the Defense Department side. Uh, winning the light utility helicopter and the tanker the first time around suggests to me that, that they're going to make honest decisions, um, and there's lots of political pressure. My sense of it is it's Congress and governors and all those people's jobs to bring political pressure to bear, and it's the Pentagon's job to ignore that and do the right thing. Um, from my perspective, where I see the opportunity for congressional intervention is kind of is perverse. Uh, it is if they keep screwing around with this thing and don't get it started, Congress, I believe, will demand a dual award just to get this thing going. And if you read what, particularly Congressman Jack Murtha has had to say, but some others, and by the way, he doesn't have a dog in this fight except the U.S. Air Force. He's actually saying uh, that as old as these aircraft are, we ought to buy them faster. And if we buy them faster, we can economically do that for two, two manufacturers. Um, again, back to the numbers earlier. If you buy um, the baseline, which was um, 18 aircraft a year, no, 15, sorry, the baseline was 15. It was 12 to 18 range, 15. It takes you 30 years to modernize the fleet. If you buy 24 aircraft, it takes you 20 years to modernize the fleet. So instead of being 80 years old when they retire, some of them will only be 70, which that seems, as I approach 70, that it seems to be. <laughs> little, still got a little distance. Seems to be an advantage. So I see the real, I mean, we almost have a congressional safety net here. Because if this thing continues to drag on and be the subject of delays and so forth, I see Congress have, taking a, a, a more responsible role and simply saying, you guys can't decide, we'll help you.